Okay, so I commonly get asked how do I keep up with the amount of information, um, especially for studying for various technologies, tools, coding, things like that. How do I kind of stay all in one place? Um, I definitely rely on tools a lot more um, than people would expect. I'm not a good note taker per se in the sense of actual handwritten notes. So I rely on specific tools like OneNote, or note taking services like my mind as well um, but i wanted to cover a specific emerging tool that's kind of gained more momentum i do remember hearing about notebook lm initially when it first came out i didn't really try it out too much um, i think some new features have come along that kind of make it a more compelling story specifically being able to distill high amounts of information into a podcast if you want to listen to research or other things in audio form format, um, this can very summarize that information. So just covering um, what this is, this is an experimental product from Google or Alphabet, if you will. They allow you to use Notebook LM for free um, with your Google account. Essentially, you can bring in um, your G Drive, G Docs, things like that. Um, but you can also upload external information and I'm going to show you um, how to use it, what are the areas to consider, um, but also what are the best ways to get the most out of it, right? So um, for starters here, I've already logged in. I'm going to call this notebook um, the California, California AI legislation. Now specifically, um, most recently the state of California, um, where most of the innovation occurs from um, a technology but b uh, regulatory concerns are typically the standard starts in the west um, because of how large california is in the u.s it's one of the largest states by gdp and a lot of facets as well well there's been a controversial um, ai safety bill that has been recently vetoed and for um, experimental purposes i've at least copied the text um, directly from the state um, site so you'll see here um, state state bill 1047 safe and secure innovation now this will show you here when i pop this out all this information the excerpt essentially a summary and then it'll have it'll extract in real time the key topics of it the bottom left hand side is the actual text that it's taking all that information from okay so um, you can get a quick high level summary right and then now i can click this specifically now I pulled in a specific YouTube video to show you you can bring um, YouTube videos inside here. So let's say I don't want to invest my time in a specific video, but I'm, I'm aware of you know the context. I just want to get a quick high level summary. Maybe um, something's a little bit better. I can just Q and A it without having to actually invest my time into it. So I've just took a video from CNBC here um, showing kind of the aftermath of it. This bill has um, been vetoed. Um, but I wanted to pull some more information, so give me the raw information, what I need to know. And I converted this before I started this recording to have it, this in a podcast format. So I basically took that information and then it generated a podcast. And now notice here I can change the playback, I can download it, right? Maybe I want to listen to it offline, etc. Um, so I can hit play. And I don't think you'll be able to hear it on your end because of my output, um, but essentially this will have a actual human-like um, tones and things like that that you can um, share and have basically read your information for you, but in a more um, interactive, entertaining mode. Now, notice here, this is essentially all my sources for a specific topic. So the key concept that you get out of the most is, let's say there's a specific notebook um, and if I go back to my notebooks, I'll show you what notebooks I do have. These are some default ones. I have a, a study guide, um, and then I have a specific research. So you essentially create a new notebook. You bring in your information. So if you see here, you have your ad sources. You can go to your Google Drive, your link, um, and or you can paste your text. Now notice here you have a source limit up to, I guess, 50 individual documents for that, because now I'm taking up three out of said 50 for each notebook itself. Now this is going to use um, Gemini, I believe, 1.5. And you can see here you have light mode um, if you want light mode or dark mode like I am viewing here. So now I can essentially say, you can see here, it's already prompting specific information of my documents. So let's say here, analyze the potential as a AB2013 um, on the development of California, considering both requirements and transparency. So while SB1047 did not pass, as far as being enacted, um, there was a number of bills that did pass um, 
from California that are now going to go into effect. What laws did pass recently for generative AI in California? What should I know? So you can see here this um, will pop populate a response. This will show you specific information around this, right? So this will also cite your information, but it brings it all in one area. And notice I can, you know, hit copy up and down. Maybe I like this response specifically, right? Maybe I'm going to use this for more research later. I can hit save as a note, and then it's going to save that. Okay, but notice here, the save responses are view only. So this, let's say this was an important part of what I wanted, right? And I can, you know, move forward. Um, but let me go back to view chat and that will bring back our interaction. So what laws did pass recently that I should know, right? Now this information was pulled from a third party website, a California privacy and AI legislation. Now notice this was as of October 7th as well. So as of today. So you can see here, AB 2013, it looks like training data transparency has now passed. And what that means is a high level summary of data sets used in developing systems. So think about this as that transparency of where are you actually getting this information um, are required to disclose whether the system uses synthetic data generation. So it's not real data per se, it's essentially generated on the carcass of real data that's essentially random in nature typically. Um, but it looks like that goes into effect January 2026. So I would be I would be surprised to see what comes out of this because there is a lot of um, California AI companies that are training on a lot of information. So how they have to publish that or how they go about that, I could see that becoming a transparency thing. Um, the definition of AI. So it's essentially defining what the law is, and that will take um, January 1st, 2025. Um, what that is essentially means. Okay, that's going to take into effect. The Transparency Act um, for videos that are essentially generated by AI systems. So think about this as anything that is altered with the use of AI um, that could be image, um, that could be video, right, or um, audio from that perspective. And I really think the big premise of this is how you're thinking about deep fakes. Um, obviously, there is a use of technology in the good ways and also the bad ways, but this essentially carves out an area for um, if the information was generated from an AI system, there has to be some type of detective mechanism, whether that's a watermark, things like that. And those are new things that are already in place for some organizations, um, but I could see that becoming now that it appears an actual law from that perspective. And then late in disclosure, it looks like that's covering AI generated content produced by their system, signaling that content is not of human origin. So that's gonna be a big one. Um, I can see that gaining more traction broadly. That looks like January, 2026. So it looks like um, at least the overhaul, the 1047, um, that did not pass. Let me actually get a summary and show you um, some of the areas. What are the key areas of SB 1047? So this bill specifically was, in my opinion, aimed at larger organizations that are training large language models, but primarily it had some good, it also had some areas that I, I'm unsure how they would actually play out. Um, it's one thing to cast a, a broad net, but we're also seeing how there is, you know, in the EU, a lot of regulations come down and there's pauses on large language models or use of generative AI in some areas um, per se from release date. So some of the key areas, um, detailing, defining covered models. Um, essentially training and associated costs. These are designed to target large, powerful models. So ideally, it was rumored that this was targeted to organizations that have large pockets to essentially train these really big models. So you want to think of something like um, Grok, G-R-O-K, not um, Grok is G-R-O-Q. OpenAI is, is a prime example, um, perhaps uh, Meta, but also Google as well for Gemini. Now, there was a contentious part of cybersecurity and the shutdown capabilities, essentially a kill switch, um, which would be a derivative of a system having the capability to shut down um, if necessary to stop um, specific harms, things of that nature. The word harm was used, but it's very vague in the way that it was used. Um, it's not defined, okay, is this physical harm? Um, what constitutes physical harm from those perspectives? Now, again, I think a lot of this was actually pretty solid. Um, a, because the people behind it are industry experts, but there's also some areas that I think 
um, that would hurt some other um, areas. So the safety and security protocols, I know this was very contentious. This looks like developers are trying to establish and implement comprehensive safety and security protocols. Protocols or detailed procedures and protections aimed at minimizing um, the critical harm from the development needed to include testing procedures to evaluate the risk associated with risk associated post-training modifications. So the reason why I think this is contentious is because these models update very quickly, um, not necessarily iterate like well, as far as how they are trained, post-training, things of that nature unsure what that really means for the evaluation procedures if so i would imagine that's some type of red teaming of sorts but how that's actually implemented is a little murky from this um, text here so i don't want to cover everything line by line but just to give you a quick overview of how you can use um, notebook lm for your specific areas now if i say here um, and i look at what is the specific video i can essentially get um, the veto itself. So if I say um, discuss California veto, it's going to pull information from this and it's probably going to use um, some high level areas here. So we can see here the summary presents a discussion of vetoing. So let's see here. This looks like it's pulling information from all well, supporters classified as having a light touch. So this looks like it's pulling from some other information here. And that looks like the first article I put can still be deployed at high risk. So this was um, the primary argument was that it was over overly broad um, and neglecting smaller AI models. Now, smaller models are becoming a large part of the conversation because you can fine tune these fairly um, cheaply now um, and they're widely used from open source perspectives. It's likely as well when you think of the impact of public cloud um, technology in the state of California, it brings in a lot of revenue to the state. So I would imagine there's a lot more going on behind the scenes, but nonetheless, as far as right now, there is still laws on the book that are going into effect. Now, if I want to bring in external information as well, like let's say from that last um, visual that I covered here, and I want to take any of this information um, kind of like to go, if you will, that's where you would download that information. But essentially you bring in all this, all the documents that you want to analyze and then you start querying against those and then you start building your notes off of them. Um, that's what really makes Notebook LM, I think a, a pretty large player in actually having a collaborative platform. Um, there's not really restrictions as far as the type of file types, fairly known, PDF, TXT, Markdown, audio, etc. cetera. Um, you can also use your Google Slides, Google Docs, right? Um, think of meeting notes, things like that. So I can really see this becoming a differentiator as a platform because this was really kind of the first that I saw that allowed um, the simply plug and play. Um, and there's not, there is plug and play models or plug and play AI platforms that allow you to do this. Most of the time they're behind some type of paywall in some shape or form, uh, whether that's a membership or a yearly type of cost. So if this is something that interests you, I would definitely take a look at Notebook LM fairly straightforward all you need is your google gmail and then you can start building from there and taking um, your own notes and then organizing your notes in one specific area